you now have a collection view which displays a single column of cells. But that's not really what we want. The whole point of collection views is to display data in a grid. A single column, while technically a grid, isn't what we're after. So how do you set up a collection view to display multiple columns of data? You might think that you can define the number of columns in a collection view from the storyboard. That's a logical assumption. It's also, unfortunately, wrong. There is no way to specify the number of a collection view's columns or rows from Interface Builder. You've got to dive back into the code. But don't despair. We'll go through it together. The number of columns in a vertically scrolling collection view, like we have, is calculated based on the item size. The item size is the same thing as the size of the cell. Currently, the item size is hard-coded, and you could hard-code the item size to a value that would create multiple columns on one device. But remember that the size of your collection view will not be uniform on all devices, in all orientations. Whether it's an iPhone or an iPad, depending on the device model, the screen size can vary. The solution is to calculate the item size based on the size of the collection view to find a cell size that will work on any device in any orientation. Since all your collection view related code is in viewcontroller.swift, that's where you'll begin. First of all, add an outlet to refer to the collection view from the storyboard. Generally, you would add all outlets and properties for class at the top of the class to keep things tidy and organized, but you don't really have to. Now that you have an outlet, you actually have to hook it up to the collection view in your storyboard. Open main.storyboard and control drag from the yellow circle in the scene dock above the view controller onto the collection view. You should get a pop-up menu with two items. Select collection view from the menu to connect the outlet you just made. That's the basic setup done. Now you can refer to the collection view from anywhere in view controller by using the collection view outlet. It's time to tell that collection view how many columns it should have. Let's say we want this collection view to have three columns. Hop back to viewcontroller.swift and add the following to view did load. First you get the width of the main view from its frame property and divide that by three to get the width of a single column on the collection view. You could have used the collection view's own width for this calculation, but depending on the situation, this can result in an incorrect value when this code runs from view did load. Ultimately, we want to set the item size of the collection view using this width value, but item size is actually a property of the layout object. Store a reference to the underlying layout for your collection view so you can get at the item size. You know the type of layout already because you set it in Interface Builder, so you can safely force cast the collection view's layout to type UI collection view flow layout. You may be wondering why you have to cast it at all. The collection view's collection view layout property is of type UI collection view layout, and it does not have an item size property. But UI collection view flow layout does since it deals with laying out cells based on their size. So you cast to the specific layout type to get access to the item size property. And now that you have access to item size, you can set it using the width constant. This item size value will override the 200 point width and height you set in the storyboard earlier. You don't have to worry about going back into Interface Builder to change it. Time to build and run. Let's see if we've got this right. That's two columns, not three columns. What happened? Well, just from looking at this, we can see that there is space between the columns, and that's not something we accounted for. In order to accurately calculate the item size, we need to know what the spacing of the collection view is set to. To find that out, go to main.storyboard and select the collection view, take a look at the size inspector, and note the size values at the top. Minimum spacing defines the minimum space between rows and columns in the collection view. According to these values, there will be 10 points between each column. Now we're armed with the information to fix our calculation. Switch back to viewcontroller.swift and modify the column width calculation in view did load to account for the spacing. Now the code takes the width of the view from its frame property and subtracts 20 from it first. Why 20, you ask? 
because the spacing between the columns is 10 points and we want three columns, there will only be two spaces between those three columns. The rest of the calculation remains exactly the same. Build and run again to check our work. Now we're seeing the three columns we wanted. Note that the number of spaces will always be one less than the number of columns. So in the future, all you need to do is take the number of columns you want, subtract one from it, and then multiply that value by the spacing you wanted between columns. That gives you the amount of space you need to subtract from the overall screen or collection view width before you calculate the column width. Notice how the cells in your collection view are laid out horizontally before they wrap at the right edge of the screen. What if you wanted them to be laid out vertically instead? Head back to main.storyboard, select the collection view, and go to the attributes inspector. Then just change the scroll direction to horizontal. Run the app again. Do you see the difference? The cells are laid out vertically now instead of horizontally, and they wrap when they reach the bottom edge of the screen. And all you had to do was change one value. That's the power of collection views. Of course, now our item size calculation is wrong. We were calculating based on the width of the device, not the height. We could adjust our item size, but we're going to stick with vertical scrolling, so switch the scroll direction back to vertical before we move on.